Good afternoon and uh, apologies for disturbing your Saturday. The UK's plan against Covid has been working. We've had the fastest vaccine rollout in Europe and now the fastest booster campaign in Europe with almost 16.8 million boosters in people's arms. And though case numbers have remained relatively high, we're seeing falling hospitalizations and falling numbers of deaths. But on Wednesday, uh, we received news of a new variant, the so-called Omicron variant. And I want to express my deep gratitude to scientists in South Africa who identified this new variant and shared the information widely and immediately. This variant is spreading around the world with two cases so far identified here in the UK. As always, I must stress this, as always with a new variant, there are many things that we just cannot know at this early stage. But our scientists are learning more hour by hour. And it does appear that Omicron spreads very rapidly and can be spread between people who are double vaccinated. There is also a very extensive mutation, which means it diverges quite significantly from previous configurations of the virus. And as a result, it might at least in part reduce the protection of our vaccines over time. So we need to take targeted and proportionate measures now as a precaution while we find out more. And first, we need to slow down the seeding of this variant in our country. We need to buy time for our scientists to understand exactly what we're dealing with and for us to get more people vaccinated and above all to get more people boosted as well as to help our NHS prepare in what is already a challenging winter. So yesterday we took steps to protect the UK against the variant coming here from southern African countries and earlier today added four more countries to the red list. But we now need to go further and implement a proportionate testing regime for arrivals from across the whole world. So, we're not going to stop people travelling. I want to stress that. We're not going to stop people travelling. But we will require anyone who enters the UK to take a PCR test by the end of the second day after their arrival and to self-isolate until they have a negative result. Second, we need to slow down the spread of this variant here in the UK because measures at the border can only ever minimise and delay the arrival of a new variant rather than stop it altogether. So in addition to the measures we're already taking to locate those who have been in countries of concern over the last 10 days, we will require all contacts of those who test positive with a, su a suspected case of Omicron to self-isolate for 10 days regardless of your vaccination status. We will also go further in asking all of you to help contain the spread of this variant by tightening up the rules on face coverings in shops and on public transport. And third, and most importantly, we need to bolster our protections against this new variant. We don't yet exactly know how effective our vaccines will be against Omicron, but we have good reasons for believing they will provide at least some measure of protection. And if you're boosted, your response is likely to be stronger. So it's more vital than ever that people get their jabs and we get those boosters into arms as fast as possible. So from today, we're going to boost the booster campaign. We're already planning to do 6 million jabs in England alone over the next three weeks. And now we're looking to go further. So the Health Secretary has asked the JCVI, the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, to consider giving boosters to as wide a group as possible, as well as reducing the gap between your second dose and your booster. And of course, we're speaking to our counterparts in the devolved administrations and we'll continue to coordinate with them. The measures that we're taking today, including on our borders and on face masks, are temporary and precautionary. And 
we will review them in three weeks. At that point, we should have much greater information about the continuing effectiveness of our vaccines. I very much hope that we will find that we continue to be in a strong position and we can lift these measures again. But right now, this is the responsible course of action to slow down the seeding and the spread of this new variant and to maximise our defences so that we protect the gains we've worked for so hard and so that we can continue to save lives. Thank you. I'm going to ask Chris to do the slides. Thank you much, Prime Minister. Uh, first slide, please. Um, we thought it was sensible to start off uh, with the existing situation, which is almost entirely Delta, uh, because that is the th problem for uh, people who are currently being infected, currently in hospital and currently dying. This isn't to say that Delta is worse than Omicron, it is simply to say this is what the majority, by far the majority of cases at the moment are. Uh, so if we uh, look at the current situation, uh, the situation remains that in terms of numbers of cases, uh, overall it is, in our view, broadly flat. Sometimes it is going up and sometimes it is going down. It went up, for example, yesterday in terms of numbers of cases. But that hides the fact that, in fact, there are essentially there are three different patterns. In uh, young, uh, younger children, uh, there is quite significant transmission at this point in time. Uh, and rates are increasing in many parts of the, of the country. Uh, at the other end of the age spectrum, as a result of the booster programme, almost certainly, rates are beginning to drift downwards in people over 60 and particularly people above 70. Uh, and the result of that uh, is that we're seeing an improvement in the group who are most vulnerable. And then between those ages, I would say broadly, uh, the, the rates are flat. They're slightly higher in certain ages and slightly lower in others. But those are really broadly the three patterns. Next slide, please. Uh, as a result of the fact that the numbers uh, in uh, the older age groups and vulnerable people are getting their booster vaccination, uh, the uh, numbers going into hospital, despite the high and in some areas rising overall numbers, the numbers going to hospital are gradually decreasing. This is not a sudden drop, this is a gradual drifting down, uh, but uh, if the numbers overall remain roughly as they are, uh, we should hope that this should continue to be the case as the booster campaign, which is very successful, very large numbers of people coming forward, continues to provide significant additional protection to people over the next weeks. Next slide, please. And this is fortunately translating again into a gradual reduction uh, in the number of people who are dying uh, of COVID. Next slide, please. Looking at the vaccination programme that the Prime Minister talked about, uh, we're continuing to see increases in the number of people coming forward for their first vaccine uh, and also uh, people coming forward for their second vaccine as part of their primary cause. And that is absolutely essential. Anybody who is not vaccinated can, uh, I please strongly encourage you to do so. Uh, the rates are already very high with Delta and we now, we now have this new risk uh, coming through. Next slide, please. And when we look at the booster programme, uh, the rates uh, of this are going uh, very well at the moment. As you can see, day by day, uh, the number of people who are getting this significant additional protection from the booster are increasing. So that's the summary in terms of the overall uh, epidemic. Now just moving on to a few additional facts on the Omicron uh, variant, um, just uh, to add to what the Prime Minister has said. Uh, we, we know that has, there are cases have uh, been uh, seen out of uh, four countries in Southern Africa, not just South Africa. And we know that they've been imported into several countries around the world, including Hong Kong, which uh, reported one of the first uh, cases, uh, Belgium, uh, and uh, more, mo most recent reports suggesting Germany, and now in the UK. We expect the numbers to continue to rise around the world over the next few days. That is, that is our very strong expectation, and the numbers of countries that will be reporting this will continue to rise. That is, I think, uh, virtually inevitable. Here in the UK, as the Prime Minister says, there are two uh, cases that have uh, been formally reported, uh, the first in Essex and the second in 
Nottingham, both of those are linked together. So they're part of the same cluster. These are not independent cases. They're part of uh, the same cluster. Um, uh, they, have, they are uh, helping uh, all the public health authorities. Uh, they are self-isolating. Uh, and there is contact tracing going on by the UK Health Security Agency uh, around uh, all of these. I just wanted to say a little bit about um, how the uh, virus, with the reason that we are concerned about this virus, and essentially it is, as the Prime Minister said, two different uh, things. The first question is, uh, uh, is a virus capable of spreading? And this one is spreading rapidly in many areas. So, for example, in, in the Gauteng uh, area of South Africa, uh, up to 90% of the uh, cases that have been reported and genotyped, uh, are, we are told, are, are of this new variant. So spread is clear and it's spreading around the world. So it has achieved the first thing, it definitely can spread. Second question is, uh, to what extent is that because it is able to escape immunity from prior infection or from vaccination? We do not at this stage know, and, uh, but what we do know is that there are quite extensive mutations on the spike protein, which is an important part of the uh, virus. And the reason that is important is that is the bit which all the vaccines are against and indeed which most natural immunity is against. So there is a reasonable chance that at least there will be some degree of vaccine escape with this variant. Now, an important thing which we've said previously with other uh, 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 bits of immunity with uh, viruses is that uh, the, it is easier for the virus to achieve uh, ability to escape for infection than it is to achieve escape for severe disease uh, and then on to mortality. So there is a reasonable chance, but I want to be clear, we need to wait until we have data before we can say this with any certainty that even if there is some or significant escape from the ability to infect someone, and therefore for them to be infectious, it may be that there's still vaccines, in particular when they've had boosters, uh, and natural infection boosted by vaccination may be sufficient to go on prevent people from going on to having severe disease and in some cases uh, dying. So that is the reason that the Prime Minister has emphasised so strongly the need to uh, boost uh, on top of a primary course, because the stronger the immune system response, the more it is able to deal with a relative disadvantage due to the uh, genetic makeup of this virus. I'm now going to pass over to Sir Patrick, who's going to add to those points. So vi viruses will continue to change, and they change all the time. There have been many variants. The reason this one is worrying, as Chris has said, is the combination of transmissibility and the potential for some degree of escape from vaccines because of the number of changes. That means, therefore, there are three things that need to be done, as the Prime Minister has said. The first is to try to limit the number of cases that enter the country from places that have got lots of cases, and that means check, trying to detect people and prevent them from spreading in the country. The second is to make sure that when we do have cases in the country, and we will have cases, just as other countries will have, that we try and limit spread in the country, and that means detecting those cases, making sure the contacts are identified and that clusters are identified and contained. And the third is to bolster our defences. And the defences are first and foremost to make sure that the vaccines are boosted because very high levels of antibody coverage will create a higher proportion of people protected even against a variant. And secondly, to make sure also that we've got the antivirals that are coming along, which won't be susceptible to the same degree of resistance uh, to this particular set of changes. So defences are, are the third important part of this as we uh, go into this next phase. But at the moment, there are few cases that need to be identified, they need to be properly looked after in terms of contact tracing, and we need to make sure that we reduce spread. Thank you very much, uh, Chris and, and Patrick. Let's go to the, to the media. Ian Watson, BBC. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister. Um, I think we're all hoping that we were seeing the beginning of the end of the pandemic, but I think people will be concerned listening to you today that we're actually seeing the beginning of new restrictions. You've said they'll be reviewed in three weeks' time. How likely is it that those restrictions could be ratcheted up in three weeks' time rather than wound down? And can you say with any confidence at the moment 
that people can keep their Christmas plans. And um, if I may ask Sir Patrick, you said at a previous press conference that you have to go hard and you have to go early. Arguably, you're going early, but not hard. This is falling short of full plan B with advice to work from home, vaccine passports and so on. Um, have people amongst your SAGE advisors been pushing for full plan B now? And if not, why not? And finally, uh, Professor Whitty, if you could answer this. Um, the government is going much quicker this time than it did over Delta. Um, is that because you're learning lessons from the pandemic, or is it because you really are far more scared about this variant than the one that is currently prevalent? Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Ian. Just, just on, on your, your, your very good point about uh, is this, you know, are we going hard enough? Why aren't we doing uh, Plan B? I think the, the key thing to understand is that you've got two variants in play here and they, they require they require a different approach so what we're doing with we think that the measures we have uh, are right for dealing with uh, with delta and 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 they're proportionate and uh, and right you, you you've heard from chris about the uh, what's happening with case numbers and also with hospitalizations with with the measures we have in place and uh, we think that this is the right approach to omicron uh, given the uncertainties that we have and uh, the need to take a, a precautionary approach with a with a with an incoming uh, variant from elsewhere about which we simply don't yet know enough so it's it's two different variants that re re require uh, two uh, simultaneous strategies if, if if you like and on your your point about uh where we are overall in the in the pandemic i i think i would just repeat what i said at the beginning that i think the uk continues to be in a in a, a much much stronger uh, position uh, we continue to be in a in a strong position largely thanks to the the speed of the vaccine rollout and now the the booster rollout and uh, as for your your question about uh, uh, about Christmas, I think I'm going to stick with the formula I've used before, which is that I'm uh, I'm pretty confident or absolutely confident this uh, Christmas will be considerably better uh, than last Christmas. Uh, if 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 if, uh, if you if, if that will do for the time being on on that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're quite right. Uh, uh, the the thing that we need to do is is always think in the face of this virus go earlier than you think you want to, harder than you think you want to, and more geographically broad than you think you want to. Those are the principles. And that remains true here. But of course, the specifics of this are different, because this isn't now a widespread variant in the UK. It's one that's coming in. Therefore, we need to make sure we've got the right measures in place to detect it. We need to make sure we can pick up the clusters in the country as quickly as possible, contain those, and to make sure that we've got contact tracing and isolation of contacts. And importantly, we must boost the defences that we have, which is why booster vaccines are so important, and go really hard and quick to get those booster vaccines across as many people as possible, reinforce the need that anyone who hasn't had a vaccine should get it, anyone who's eligible for a booster now and hasn't had it should get it, because that's going to give the, the high antibody levels and the high response, which stands the best chance of actually stopping this from causing problems in terms of severe disease and deaths. In terms of question you asked me, I mean, I think we're learning lessons the whole time. Uh, I think it is important, though, to stress that the, the risk here is different to Delta. Delta it was primarily driven by the ability to spread really rapidly, but less concern about the vaccination escape. This one here, really the biggest thing that is leading us to wish to move rapidly is to do with the uh, at least strong theoretical reasons for thinking that some degree of vaccine escape is likely, given the number of mutations. But there's a, obviously a much longer answer than that. Thank you. Uh, Nick Martin, Sky. Good evening, everyone. Um, just firstly to you, Prime Minister, can you just be a bit clearer about what you said about phase coverings? You said it would be necessary to tighten up on them. Are you tonight saying that you are going to make face coverings mandatory in whatever indoor spaces? And just to Professor Valence, uh, Sir, Sir Patrick and Professor Whitty, have you looked at have you modelled the potential spread of this new variant over the next few weeks and months? What picture does that show? And can we really rule out lockdowns as a result of what you know about this variant? Uh, Nick, thank you very much. On, on face coverings, uh, what we're looking at is uh, retail and, and transport, so just, just going back to a, a, a position where you, you have to wear them in, uh, in retail settings or, or, on, uh, or on public transport. But the Health Secretary, uh, Saj, will be setting out more uh, in, in the course of the next day or so. 
Uh, in terms of uh, the modelling of this, in order to model, you need some information around the increased degree of transmissibility or otherwise, and that's still being collected. So we don't yet have enough information to know exactly whether this is more transmissible, if so, by how much. What we do know from South Africa, and Chris has alluded to this, is there are pockets of rapidly growing outbreaks, but that's a rather different situation. So we're trying to get that information. I have to say the South African scientists have been absolutely brilliant. They've been brilliant at detecting it. They've been brilliant at sharing that information, and that's been very helpful to the whole world, actually. Um, so I think we'll get more information on transmissibility. We'll get more information on the um, ability of, this vac uh, of the vaccines to um, protect against the virus, but that's going to take a little bit of time. And so at the moment, I'm afraid, the models are more sort of if it spreads very fast, of course, it's going to spread very fast and go into a lot of places. And if it spreads less fast, it's going to do so less. We can't really get much further than that. But um, if it's very transmissible and obviously does cause big escape, then clearly that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a major issue to face up to. But that isn't what we know at the moment. We need to get that information. Great. Thanks. Uh, Vincent McCavity, ITV News. Thank you, Prime Minister. I mean, so there'll be people watching this wondering why you're not going further into Plan B and ordering people to work from home, if that might help us actually have something towards a normal Christmas and reduce the spread. Also, things like having vaccine passports and using the check-in apps once again. So why aren't you doing that at this point? Also for you, there have been calls over the last year for developing developed nations to help more developing nations roll out the vaccine. Is this now evidence that we should have done more in the past year to do that with international partners. Uh, and for uh, Sir Patrick and uh, Professor Witte, on the uh, vaccination scheme, you said you're going to boost the booster rollout. What does that mean? Is the age going to come down? And for vaccinations for those under 12 uh, and second vaccinations for those aged 12 to 15, are we going to see that coming shortly as well? Thank you. Thanks. A very, very important point, uh, Vincent. The but I want to go back to what I was saying about the, the difference between uh, Delta and, and Omicron and the need to, uh, to have slightly different tactics to, to cope with them. When you, when you look at, uh, at, at Delta, uh, the measures that we have in, in place uh, are, are, are effective in the sense that you're seeing this downwards tracking of, of hospitalizations and, and deaths as assisted by uh, the booster program and, and, and by the massive take up of, of vaccines. And that's the, the, the key takeout, I hope, from uh, this briefing today is that the, the best way to beat the, this piece of news is for everybody to, to get their, uh, their booster. But for Omicron, what you, what you need to do is, is to try to slow the, the seeding uh, with the, the border measures that we're taking, the, the tough measures that we're taking at the, uh, at the border uh, in order to, to, to give us time to find out exactly what the risk is, but more importantly, uh, to uh, allow that booster program could give, an, give us time to have uh, another you know, six million uh, boosters in, in people's arms. And we think that would be, uh, that would be uh, very valuable. And um, so you had a second question, forgive me. On, yeah, on there'd be many calls to help developing nations. Yes, I'm sorry, on, 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 on vaccines around the world. Uh, th that is something that um, I think the UK can be incredibly proud of and we've we've done a huge amount to to vaccinate the world I th don't don't forget that uh, one and a half uh, billion uh, doses have been delivered at cost thanks to the deal the UK government did uh, with AstraZeneca and I think when you when you look at the arrival of and the, and the, the spread of omicron sadly it's been it's been in in countries where the problem has not been supply a vaccine it's been it's been really to do with 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 hesitancy and uh, and lack of take up so uh, i think that you know there might be many uh, oh, oh, we do need to do more to vaccinate the world uh, the uk has been has been leading in that but i i don't think i mean i, I defer to, to 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 chris and chris and patrick but i don't think that that is the uh, the, the issue here on the question you asked about um, uh, extending the numbers, so uh, the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, JCVI, uh, which uh, gives the advice to the government, is taking into account the fact this really changes the risk-benefit calculations for several of the decisions which they still have to take, which includes extending down uh, in the age range uh, into younger adults, for example, for boosters. So they will reassess decisions they've taken and decide whether in the light of this new information, and they'll do this rapidly, in the light of this new information, they wish to advise an extension beyond the groups that are there already. 
I've got nothing. nothing. Great, thanks. David Maddox, Sunday Express. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, can you, uh, all a question for all three of you, really. Can you be clear to people about your level of concern compared to the Delta vir uh, variant last year? And is it that the circumstances have changed so much that we can be less concerned than, uh, than this time last year? And can you appreciate that given how rapidly things developed last year, that people will be worried, especially the hospitality industry, about Christmas, should people in that industry and should others be taking precautionary measures at this point on that basis? Uh, regarding the JCVI uh, uh, review of vaccines, can you give some more of a rationale to extending it downwards, given that there is a significant group of parents who are worried about the effect of vaccines on children and the evidence so far that suggests that uh, children aren't as badly affected by the virus as other age groups. And finally, on vaccine passports, what is the likelihood of those being introduced? And are you looking at the uh, outcomes in Scotland, which suggest that it hasn't had an impact so far on the spread of the virus? Thank you very much, David. I think I'm going to ask Chris and Patrick to comment on vaccination of younger people and, uh, and uh, I mean, vaccination of children in, in particular. But just on your point about hospitality, there's, as you'll have seen, there's, there's nothing uh, that we've announced uh, tonight uh, that changes the position for, for hospitality. And I'm just going to repeat uh, what I've said. I believe that as a result of the vaccination programme and of the, of the booster programme uh, that is going very, very fast now, that the UK is in a much, much stronger position. And it, it's in order to retain that strong position that we're taking the sensible precautionary steps uh, that we're taking today and i continue to uh, you know i repeat what i said about uh, my, my formula about christmas uh, that i'm I, you know, I, I've, I have every reason to think that it will be considerably better uh, david than last year uh, on the jcbi um question uh, so there are broadly three sets of questions they're going to look at the first one is actually extending down in adults down to people 18 for a booster vaccination and I do think that's probably the most urgent of the decisions they will have to take. There's then a question about a, a second dose for uh, children who've chosen to take the children whose families have chosen to take the first dose uh, and those uh, aged 12 to 15. They've already decided that this should be extended to uh, young people uh, 16 and 17 uh, and um, the evidence on that I think uh, is uh, broadly been uh, as evidence has come in it has made us more reassured about safety rather than less reassured about safety so and it, we are you know I think most parents would agree that there are now significant outbreaks amongst those who are not vaccinated in schools indeed some amongst some who are vaccinated there is there is a significant uh, issue in children of that age uh, and that therefore clearly should be looked at by jcvi and then they will look additionally at the younger age groups and they will take a view as to whether they think the evidence is clear enough obviously some uh, countries like the usa have already decided to go in that direction uh, but jcvi are an independent committee they will take the decision based on the sciences in front of them but to be you know to go back to this point about uh you know were we more concerned or less concerned the point we have at the moment is there's a lot of uncertainty about the new omicron uh, variant and because of that uncertainty it is sensible to take a precautionary approach until we know uh, which way things are going and do that rather than look back and wish we'd done yeah. so before yeah i mean just just to add to that i mean i think the, the one thing that i think makes people concerned and that's why there's so much interest in this is the number of mutations and the way in which that might change uh the immune system's recognition of the virus which is how you get um, vaccine escape. So that's, that's why people are concerned about this. But as Chris said, there's huge uncertainty about exactly how that translates into protection, and that's what needs to be looked at. Reasons to be overall much less concerned in the long run is because we've got vaccines that are effective. The vaccine manufacturers actually can change them quite easily. So we've got a very changeable platform of vaccines now. And we've got drugs coming along antiviral drugs which work so we've got a, a far greater armamentarium than we had 
months ago, and certainly you know, a totally transformed picture compared to a year ago. I, I certainly agree with that. Uh, David Woodinson. Uh, Prime Minister, um, I want to push you a little bit more on Christmas, please, because the thing which is at the forefront of our minds, I take your view that uh, you, we'll have a better Christmas, and I'm glad to hear that. But can you, for the sake of you, people watching and for our readers, uh, say how important it is to use these mitigations, wearing your mask and all the other things, in order to have a good Christmas this year? The, um, could I also uh, ask a couple of your, your two experts, um, uh, uh, Professor Witte, you mentioned that some people might have a bit of fatigue about abiding by uh, the restrictions after two years of this. Do you think that there'll be any problems in that area with this new variant as we try to get people back into some more restricted lifestyle? And Sir Patrick, um, how long do you think it would take to get a vaccine tweaked that might be able to deal with this once we... Uh, taking into account we need to have the fact before we do that. And secondly, the amateur scientists among us uh, were saying a couple of days ago when we first heard about this variant uh, that uh, if it's there, it's already in Britain, and so it came to pass that it is. So were the amateur scientists now thinking, oh gosh, it's going to be spreading through Britain rapidly, it'll let rip before long. Is that something we need to fear about, or how can you uh, calm us down on that one? Thank you. Uh, so, so, David, I just really to, to repeat what I've uh, said before, uh, the, the thing about, as, as Chris and Patrick have said, uh, it, is, it is pretty clear uh, that uh, if you're, no, no matter what the effects of this uh, new variant, if you're uh, vaccinated, in, in, in particular, if you have a booster, uh, your immune response is likely uh, to be to be stronger so the best thing you can do the best thing everybody can do is get your get your booster and the stronger the overall uh, position will be will, will, all, will all be in as i say we're, as, as we go forward to christmas we are in a strong position but uh, the objective of what we're doing uh, tonight is to is to keep that position strong in the question you asked me i mean i i uh, i was uh, puzzled by some of the headlines i read uh, of what i said uh, this morning because they bore no relationship in my view to what I actually said but that sometimes happens I'm sure it doesn't happen under any of your watches uh, and uh, what I said was asking a rhetorical question the UK public have been absolutely extraordinary at responding when they have it explained to them why to do it and my point and my central point was only if you're going to ask people to do something lay out all the data very clearly explain it very honestly and so that people understand why it is that you're asking something to do something. That was the point I was making. Quite how it turned into uh, what it was reported as, I don't fully understand. But anyway, that was the point. And if I can make one Christmas plea, it would be that when people raise their glasses at Christmas, they do so to the extraordinary scientists yeah. who've produced the vaccines, the diagnostics, yeah, yeah, yeah. the drugs, which will allow this Christmas, as the Prime Minister said, to be in a very different place to what it would have been without them. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. On, the, on, on the question about... Um, vaccines and, and how long will it take. I think, I think it's important to recognise there are three ways in which this can be done, and the companies are all thinking about this. The first is that boosters will give high enough antibody coverage that actually that's going to be enough to cover this. That's the first situation and, and, and needs to be tested, but that, that looks like something that anyway is going to give protection. Whether there's more needed on top of that, we'll have to see. The second is that Vaccine manufacturers have been producing broader vaccines anyway to get broader coverage across potential new variants. So those are in the pipeline. And then a couple of companies have already said they could tweak their existing vaccines and get a new vaccine out specifically against this in about 100 days. And so th those are the sort of three scenarios. Clearly, the one which is the one to really go for now is boost, because it, it is the case that as you keep boosting with the vaccine, you get slightly broader coverage because the immune system knows it needs to get broader and because the antibody levels are so high it actually causes enough coverage of other variants to be effective so i think that's really why the boosting is so important um the spread of the variant i mean the amateur um scientists were in line with the professional scientists which is you, you're not going to stop these things from going around the world and we've seen that time and time again new variants that have significant transmissibility advantage will spread so the question on this one is, does it have significant transmissibility advantage? Those data are being looked at and collected. Um, so we do expect it to spread. You can delay the spread by actions. 
you won't stop it and you can see that now delta is pretty much everywhere and depending on what omicron does in terms of its transmissibility it might either spread or it gets halted because delta outcompetes it and we just don't know yet thanks uh, hugo guy the eye um Thank you. Um, can, I, can I press you, Prime Minister, on, on the question of the JCVI? Are you hoping that they will report back on uh, whether or not to broaden boosters by the end of this coming week, or is it going to take a bit longer than that? Uh, and can I ask Professor Whitty, uh, when do you expect antiviral treatments such as Molnupiravir and Paxlovid, uh, which the UK already has on order, to be deployed in the NHS for the first time? Uh, Hugo, thanks very much. A, a good, good question about the JCVI, but they are they are an independent uh, body, and uh, uh, but clearly uh, the, we hope that we'll we'll get some answers for everybody uh, as as soon as possible. But um, on, on the antivirals, uh, I mean, and, and Sir Patrick may want to add to this because, uh, but on the antivirals, we are going to have to do a bit of a rethink in the basis of this new variant just to be confident we got the right indications for it because there are a variety of ways you could use it in different ways and what we need to make sure is that whatever stock we've got of these uh, what appear to be highly effective drugs uh, that we use uh, in the most effective way and for the right people because where you are in the uh, pathway right from the very beginning when people as prophylaxis all the way through to treating people in intensive care putting get working out their place uh, we do need to think through and I think we probably need to do a, a rethink of it just to make sure that with the new variant we're actually targeting in the right direction. Good, thanks. Have we got Will James from Be It Will? Yes, that's me, yes. Uh, was it a mistake not to close the uh, border sooner or rather uh, tighten the travel restrictions and uh, will you be considering uh, uh, sorry, adding countries like Belgium and others where the Omicron variant's been reported to the red list? Thanks, Will. Well, I, thank you very much. Listen, I, 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 I would I really don't know how we could have acted uh, faster. We got the, we got the news on. I was told about it on I think Thursday, and we and, and we we closed the the uh, we put uh, quite a lot of southern African countries on the red list uh, yesterday. Uh, uh, some more today, and what we're announcing uh, is some tough measures for, for I'm afraid for everybody uh, traveling. So that you 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 know you have to do a PCR test as soon as you get back here, and you've got to isolate for 48 hours until you get a negative result. And I'm afraid uh, that that may sound tough, but that is just the the way it's got to be. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.